Hey there, Internets. It's Chris Krug checking in from the uh, Next Media Conference here in Banff. I'm here with Bill Buxton, this morning's keynote. Say hi to the Internet, Bill. Hi, Internet. Bill's uh, with Microsoft uh, uh, Canada Research, right? No, actually, Microsoft Worldwide Research. Microsoft Worldwide Research. Yeah. Um, based Global in, Galactical Based in Seattle? Uh, yeah, yeah, we're based in Seattle, all over the world. Yeah. Yep. I heard they're opening a research lab in Vancouver, maybe? Uh, there's people there, but uh, Cambridge, Mass, Bangalore, India, Beijing. Wow. Cambridge, England. Very good. Yeah. And what are you working on there these days? Ah, um, I largely work on trying to change the culture of the company so that it designs on an equal footing with technology. But right. that involves also working on projects around imaging, telecommunications, telepresence, uh, the creative. You come from a design background? Uh, percussion design, larger music. I, was a, I, I started off as a percussion musician and I started making film, audio music for films in 71 with computers. So, became a designer, so polyglot. Right. Not very good at anything, but jack of all trades. This morning in your uh, keynote, you were talking about photography and how uh, digital photography is uh, more than just uh, replacing film, but actually opens up new vehicles and avenues. Tell us a little about that. Yeah, well, the, the issue is, is that, you know, your digital still camera isn't just a still camera, it's actually a movie camera as well. Right. So all of a sudden, in the camera, you're blurring the distinction with still motion photography. But actually, that's only in the device. It hasn't but the, that, it says that's a, there's a continuum there, and there's a whole bunch of space in the middle that digital imaging hasn't taken advantage of at all, mm -hmm. except perhaps of quick time VR panoramas. Right. So the comment there is, is that if you, um, there's things you can do in terms of techniques using software and hardware that let you cut by an order of magnitude the cost of production in terms of to get a certain shot on the screen, the speed, the cost, so that when you are a young filmmaker, when you're trying to do the film on a low budget, if you can get it up there, it'll compete with anything else um, for a budget you can afford. Like, so you, you can have a full studio for the cost of a So you're saying that, that, that the future of digital photography has a place in filmmaking then as well? Absolutely. I showed a trailer, okay. and there's a bunch of literate people there, and the entire trailer was made with an Icon F still camera, and nobody knew. Hmm. And they still, I don't think they believed me at right. the end even. Right. But then I showed them how it was done. Um, or uh, the, the key thing is, is that if you go back into the 30s with Zelnick and Hitchcock, they were making movies full of visual effects right. because they were cheap. They, they, they weren't going to spend any money on this stuff at all, and nobody could tell. There's a head of production, Rick McCallum, over at, uh, at Lucasfilm, and he has this great line. It's, it's, what you, it's what you don't see that makes the effect special. Yeah. And so I come from Alias and this whole world of visual effects and right. stuff like that. You were one of the founders of Alias? No, I wasn't a founder. I was a chief scientist for about nine years okay. and, and throughout the development of Maya and stuff like that. And, and the thing was is that um, that industry focuses just on 3D animation and high-end visual effects, when in fact where the growth is and what's happening is digital is going across the whole board. And, and like with Hitchcock, effects have just as much, if not more, rel relevance to romantic comedies right, yeah. than, than to these effects films, but we haven't figured it out and we haven't gotten in the workflow. But the main thing is, you can have a film with a huge cast of, of people on screen with actually a really small budget. And, and just the, here's the quick pointer if, to get an example. Get the Young Indiana Jones t a movie series yep. on DVD box and, and then watch them. And there's, and there's one movie there, but every one of those cost $1.2 million. So that's the total budget. And then look at, there's one there on World War One. Compare that to Passchendaele, which is $20 million, or to uh, Saving Private Ryan. And, 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 and look at it and say, Compared to Saving Private Ryan, which is probably around 80 to 120 million dollars, yeah. to Passchendaele, which is 20 million dollars, big budget for Canadian film. What's the difference in the effect? And, and then watch this for 1.2 million dollars, and that that'll, that that says it all. What's possible? And here's the cool thing: when Lucas or Coppola were in film school, they were making these like eight millimeter movies yeah. that were really cool and stuff, like that, but they could never get them distributed on television, much less on on feature, because the technology was crap, mm -hmm. right? But it let them it would at least help them hone the crowd. If you are one of them, and you do a good film, and you're a high school student, guess what? Where we are now, if you're effective with the technology, especially with these technologies, you can get, just you get, you get a feature release. And I don't mean like the Blair Witch Project, where it, right. the script makes it crappy right, right. imagery, right? right? That's part of the you write the story, but where it plays on every level. And the only thing that's interesting is, do you have a good story? Yeah. Well presented. I think it's an awesome, inspiring yeah. message for young yeah. development creators. Yeah. So thanks a lot. It's been uh, good talking with you. My and, pleasure. Uh, yeah. Uh, Chris Crude checking out from Next Media in Bam.